Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. Jay Klein Connect here along with head coach Scott Langer. Coach, a uh, big weekend up in Minot, and uh, you know we'll try to curb our enthusiasm a little bit, just like we do on uh, when it's a bad weekend. It's kind of the nature of the game and, and uh, of the sport for sure. Uh, but the Wings sweep Minot 2-1 on Friday night with Pitters and Burke scoring power play goals. Then on a 7-1 win Saturday night with Kelly, Sladek, Sicoli getting his first as a wing, Noble and Strata scoring, and then Burke with two goals on Saturday night. So uh, a, a big weekend and a lot of things really clicking for the Wings and the level of effort and everything that, that um, was put in on, on, over the weekend. It seemed like it really started with Friday. And, of course, Jack, uh, Jack Kelly getting the hard hat Friday night, and he put in just an amazing performance, um, just grit, determination, and it really seemed to carry over to the rest of the team and into Saturday. What, what are your thoughts on the weekend? Yeah, you know, it was uh, right away out of the gates on Friday night. We got put on our heels, and uh, the good thing – you know, for us is to to see from a you know coaching standpoint is uh, the way we push back. You know, they had four or five good shifts right out of the gate, and our guys just push back. And then, you know, your captain goes the length of the ice and tucks one home to to give you guys the confidence, give our guys the confidence. And um, you know, you start adding in the goaltending that we had um, and the amount of block shots that we had as a team. The 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 details were definitely there, and it certainly makes a difference when your team sticks to the details. Um, you know, a weekend like we had against Minot, you know, proves that if you stick to the details, you know, good things are going to happen. Yeah. Well, and like, like you mentioned, block shots. And I know I heard Coach Bowen say there were 16 on Friday night and a bunch more on Saturday nights too. Saturday night too. Uh, on Friday night, without a stick, Jack Kelly blocked probably three or four on, on some extended offensive pressure. And, uh, you know, again, that just seemed like that level of, of determination carried over to everybody. I mean, guys like Pitter and Strada and, and uh, Fletcher, everybody was involved blocking shots throughout the course of the weekend, doing a great job defensively. As you said, certainly goaltending is a part of that, too. Gabe and all only allowing two goals on the, uh, on the weekend. Um, and you talked about details, and I, knew, I know that, you know, you're, you're big on, on the block shots and so on. What made the difference in the specialty teams? You guys w um, went... Uh, two of two of four on Friday night, and the kill was fantastic on the weekend. Uh, was that a detail kind of thing too, or were there some changes made? Well, there's no question. It comes down to details. You know, Coach Bowen puts a lot of, of effort into that power play, and you know he studies the tape pretty good against each opponent. And you know, but it, it also takes the guys sticking to the details. You know, you can lay it out, but you have to have execution. And I thought our guys executed perfectly. Obviously, the, the specialty teams were the difference, I believe, both nights, you know, and, you know, they certainly had a fair amount of power plays and our penalty kill stepped up. But again, you know, we were actually blocking shots on our penalty kill. We were in lanes. Uh, we were setting the puck 200 feet. We, you know, we were just doing things that we, we haven't seen surface, you know, consistently. We've seen it happen on uh, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Well, like you said, both nights. Uh, three of nine on the power play on the weekend. And again, as I mentioned, the kill was perfect on seven challenges. Um, consistency. We've talked about it in the past, uh, in previous weeks and so on, and that that's been a little bit of an Achilles heel where guys, you know, maybe show up Friday but don't Saturday or so on. How do you keep a, game, a weekend like that? Uh, how do you keep that kind of uh, keep going and uh, kind of, I guess, address the consistency issue? Well, I mean, I think we needed a weekend like that. You know, and, and to feel what it's like to, to have to earn those wins on the road. You know, we, we were down to 10 forwards on Saturday. Mm -hmm. We had two defensemen inserted as forwards into the lineup, so there was quite a bit of adversity, um, and we got it done. And, you know, we need some of those uh, bumps in the road and, and to pull ourselves through and, and finish on top. But, you know, we come back today and, you know, first thing Monday usually isn't the greatest practice, but today was outstanding. So, you know, the energy level's there, and I think uh, a weekend like we had against Minot can, can definitely push us along here. Obviously, you got Brookings coming up, and they're the top team in the division, and it's going to take another solid effort, you know, to, to solve them. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned one of my next points, which was short players uh, due to illness and injury and so on. A jumbled up lineup. You had, as you mentioned, defensemen playing uh, in the forward position and so on. How, what kind of, a, of stress or what kind of pressure does that put you guys as a coaching staff in where you're trying to figure out who's going to do what when? Well, you know, it's certainly before it happens, it's quite stressful. You yeah. know, uh, when you have guys playing a position that they've never played before in their life. But when they make it easy on you and they go out there and they – they actually execute and, and do exactly, you know, keep the game simple and do exactly what you ask them to do. 
um, life gets a lot easier. Yeah. And, uh, you know, our guys this weekend, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of drop off in our lineup. You know, everybody went hard. Everybody did what they had to do. Uh, and the only thing they were, the only thing they had in their mind were the four points, which from a coaching standpoint, it's, uh, it's easy to coach a team like that. Yeah. Well, um, again, Saturday night, the goals just were pouring in and uh, just seemed like really giving Minot fits on all ends of the ice. I mean, you really had it tilted, and I heard it from some of the fans, even some of the guys in the press box even were just uh, really impressed with the play of some of the players and of the team as a whole. Uh, a couple of uh, fights on, on Saturday night, Tim Mikowski. Surprised me a little bit. Tim's kind of a, a good-looking guy. You don't expect those guys to to, to get in uh, Tilly's, but um, then Trey Bagwell also. Is that a product of frustration? Do you think from uh, a team like Minot when they just can't seem to do anything right, and they're just gonna like, all right, well we're gonna, you know, well let emotions get to us, or uh, you know, I don't know. What 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 do you attribute that to? Yeah, certainly it's it comes down to frustration, but you know, on a it, it, that it really shouldn't happen in a seven-one game. You right. know, it's uh, if you go down three to one, maybe you start seeing that. Try to turn the game around a little bit, but you know, to get liberties taken when you know the score is way out of reach doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Well, and that's actually kind of why I brought it up because you know you expect that if it's a cheap shot and retaliation or something like that, but that wasn't the case really with either of those. So, um, again, why, one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to to touch on it. Um, Nick Sicoli. Uh, he, he gets his first goal uh, with the Aberdeen Wings on Saturday night and had a couple, I believe, two assists on Friday night. Big weekend for him. Uh, just joining the team late last week. Um, you know, usually I ask you, what can you tell us about this guy? Well, in this case, there's a lot of information out there uh, around the internet and around junior hockey news and stuff that really kind of talked about Nick being a, a you know 110% energy guy all the time, doesn't take a shift off energy and so on. And honestly, I, I thought he really lived up to that billing where you know he provided a, a, a nice spark for the for the wings over the weekend. Um, what's it mean to have a guy like him on this team? Well, uh, it's um, it's big, you know. To, to add a guy like Nick, you know, the leadership he brings to the table. I mean, the guy's played a tremendous amount of junior hockey. And he's just a mature individual. I mean, his approach to the game is, is uh, something a lot of our young guys can really learn a lot from. You know, he's all business and his work ethic is outstanding. You know, the funny thing about this weekend, it's his first two games in a lot of months, you know, and mm -hmm. he's just been training. So he did a great job stepping in there, and it tells you what kind of shape he is, shape he's in, because yeah. the amount of minutes he played. But he just does everything hard, and, and he does things the right way. And he's all about. If you hear him on the bench, he's just all about the team. Uh, there's no selfishness in his game at all. So, you know, we're, uh, you know, having guys like Nick around puts us in real good shape. Yeah. Well, really impressive on the on the forecheck. You know, he and, and John Slotic and Joey Strada really providing a lot of pressure. And I just it seemed like they were involved in a lot of a lot of uh, in turnovers, turn being able to turn over Minot and so on. So again, hopefully we see even more uh, to come from that, that young man Nick Sicoli, and then we welcome him as an Aberdeen Wing. Uh, more to come, folks. We've got a lot to talk about as far as the Brookings Blizzard, a home and home coming up with them. Also, a, a fan question coming up. Uh, we're going to take a break right now, though, and we'll be back after these words from our sponsor. Let's make a taco. <laughs> no, seriously. Start with a tortilla, soft tortilla, warm it, kiss it, don't kiss it. Chicken, how about tequila lime chicken? Now we're cooking. Slice this, peel that, snip those. Salsa, verde. Cheese, cotilla. Oh, forgot to mention. Guac, that's better. See, anyone can make a taco, but we're not anyone. We're Qdoba, and these are knockout tacos. Qdoba Mexican eats. Choose flavor. Welcome back to Wings Weekly. Jay Klein Connect here along with head coach Scott Langer as we kind of wrap up the weekend that was and look forward to the weekend that is coming. One of the things I wanted to make sure and mention, of course, is Nathan Burke has been named the Central Division Player of the Week, a five-point weekend for, for Mr. Burke, as, uh, scoring two goals on Saturday night and one on Friday and a couple of assists thrown in there as well. You know, we talked about it before the break, uh, how Slotik and, and uh, um, Sicoli had uh, strong weekends as well. Coach pointed out during the break that uh, all on the same line, so that line for, uh, generating a lot of energy and a lot of a lot of scoring. So, um, Coach, right now it's standings, Brookings at 19, and as you mentioned earlier on, they lead the division. The Wings right now at 18 in second uh, in second place. Bismarck also has 18 points, but uh, a lower win percentage. Austin at 15, sweeping Bismarck over the weekend. Bismarck has now lost four straight. 
um, and Wilderness, uh, Wilderness at 16 and Minot in sixth with 15 points. Um, you know, it's early to be talking standings and that kind of stuff, but compared to where you were at last year at this time, to be able to be towards the top of the division and gaining ground as the weeks go on, how nice is it to not have to really be thinking about digging out of a hole come, you know, late December, January and so on and making a big run to uh, a big push? Well, I mean, it certainly is uh, a lot easier, I should say, you know, but, um, you know, two different teams. This year we have, we have a lot more veteran guys that, you know, their expectations are, you know, to defend the Central Division Championship that we won last year. And, um, you know, I think this is a team that could fight for, for, the, for a top spot in this league down the stretch. But, you know, at least right now we're going through some injuries and going through some, you know, things here, that, but we're, we're winning some games along the way. Where last year, you know, we had to fight out of quite the, yeah. you know, we, we, we were down there. We were ways down there. But and we don't want to be in that situation again. So there's a little motivation there as well. But you know, this is uh, it's a, it's tough division right now. You if you don't win every weekend, you're you're going to go from a top spot down to a bottom spot mm -hmm. with, with the way that everybody's uh, jockeying for position in this division. Yeah, and like I said, if they're all jockeying position for position, and it's already you know just early on in the season. Well, Brooklyn's coming up as we talked a little about earlier, a home and home with them. Um, even games, these things, these games have been heated, and that rivalry seems to be building in intensity, uh, at least in my mind, over the course of this last year and 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 the early on in this year. Uh, kind of a, a mix up with uh, assistant coaching over there. Are there are there some distractions with them? Are they you know what what do you and I'm not that I'm asking you to speculate on what's going on in their locker room, but how do you prepare for the, for Brookings, and um, what are some keys going to be? Well, I mean, obviously Mo does a great job. Mm -hmm. You know, their team will be completely focused. You know, they they've played great hockey up until this point, so you got to expect them to be ready to go come Friday night. You know, they're 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 a team that can flat out skate and they can make plays. So. Yeah. Uh, if our details aren't there like they were this past weekend, you know, we're going to find ourselves in a real bad spot. You know, they come at you really hard, you know, they force you to make plays coming out of your zone. So you, you have to do that and you have to capitalize on the opportunities you get because they don't give up a whole lot defensively. So, I mean, they're a good hockey team. There's no question. So we're going to have to be, uh, we're going to have to be on our game, but we are fully capable. More of the same, back to the grind and getting ready for a, another tough Central Division opponent coming up here. Coach, uh, we talked about being a little bit short, short-staffed, I guess, uh, with a couple of injuries and uh, illness and so on. Um, overall, health of the team okay? Yeah, no, we're we're in good shape. Um, you know, we're like I said, we're just doing what we have to do to, to to win hockey games, and we have guys willing to step into positions that they they're not used to playing for the betterment of the team. So. Uh, as long as that's happening, I think we're uh, we're okay. Okay, good to hear. All right. Well, we'll uh, talk a little bit about the the weekend's games coming up and what you folks can expect. And we certainly hope to see you all out at the OD. But one final question here, and it kind of this might get a little lengthy. This comes from a, a, from a fan who specifically asked me to ask you if it bothers you at all to hear negative comments and so on from the fans when you're on the road, when you're getting chirped, so to speak. And uh, I kind of laughed it off thinking I, I got a funny feeling that uh, I'm about 100% sure that you couldn't give a, a darn. But it led me to, to junior hockey culture as a whole and how it's different. So first, does it bother you at all to, to hear, you know, the, the crowd razzing you a bit? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm um, doing this long enough where it just <laughs> kind of... Um, I don't really hear it. I'll be honest with you. I, my focus is always 100% on the the guys on our bench and the guys on the ice. So, um, you know, one of the fun things about junior hockey is the the fans that surround it and and how they get in and, and support their own teams. So if it's screaming at me, <laughs> you know, and rather than watching their team play, that so have at it, I guess. Well, and this this ties in a little bit because you know. In my not, I'm sitting directly behind the, the penalty boxes, and I'm watching, and, and I can't, you can't help but hear what is being said to the guys as they're serving their, uh, their minutes in the sin bin there, and, and the reaction that they have. Some of them will ignore it completely. Some of them start jawing back and forth. Some of them will squirt some water balls with bottles at the glass, sort of stuff that you see in the NHL games. And it led me to think a little bit about the, the culture of junior hockey as a whole. 
and how different it is from, say, high school sports that are overseen by an activities board and how everything's supposed to be so, um, you know, sportsmanlike and everything, and you have to be careful not to offend anyone or do this or do that. And I got to thinking about how, you know, after our goal song last year, you know, I, I was one that kind of challenged people to get away from saying that you suck and that kind of thing. Two reasons why. One, not for, so much for the skaters and the people on the ice, but for the little kids in the stands. But also because if you're getting beat and you're telling the goaltender you suck, it seems kind of ridiculous to me. But anyway, after having seen and heard everything that I hear in these other buildings, what is your, what is your thought on that? Is it just part of the game? Because when I talk to the players, they love it. I mean, they, it, they get excited when they're in a hostile environment. Yeah, you know, I think that's what junior hockey is. I mean, it's uh, it allows so many people to be involved, and it includes the fans. And the fans seem, you know, there's always your group of fans that think that they're the difference makers. <laughs> and, um, you know, they're going to get inside the players' heads. And, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, you know. But obviously, the mature guys, you know, take it, have a little fun with it, and, and they move on, they go back to work. So. You know, that kind of makes, you know, that's what junior hockey is. And I think you see a little bit at, at the college level as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's a fine line, obviously. And, and I think for the most part, like in our division, I think, you know, the fans are great. And, mm -hmm. you know, they really don't cross that line, and, uh, you know, of, of saying things that get into, you know, racially or anything like that. They're just having a little fun with it. So, um, you know, it's great. I, uh, I don't have any problem with it. I know when you come into the OD, um, you're going to have your hands full with, with the fans that we have. So yep. um, I'm expect, fully expecting to take a little bit of that heat on the road. Yeah. Well, that's what I've said. You know, you're, you're, you get what you give, so to speak. And uh, the, I don't know. I just, it was a point that, I, uh, that was brought up to me and I wanted to, to address a little bit with you, but also just because I thought it was interesting that it isn't, it isn't a high school activity. You know, it is a definitely a, a, a beast of its own, and it does kind of add to the allure of it. And some of it, if you can laugh it off a little bit or, or realize that it is just said in, uh, in, in fun, like the players seem to be able to do. It's, uh, it, it is part of the appeal. Well, all right, folks, Wings uh, in action, as we talked about, with a uh, home and home with the Brookings Blizzard coming up on Friday, November 10th at Brookings. You can watch the game at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Aberdeen or by logging on to HockeyTV.com. Listen to the action on 94.1 The Rock, HubCityRadio.com, or the Hub City Radio app. And on Saturday, November 11th versus Brookings, a military appreciation night, all veterans and active military will receive free admission and family and military personnel will receive a discount of tickets at the door. $10 general admission tickets are on sale now at all four Sea Express locations. Wings are teaming up with the Aberdeen Chamber Ambassadors this holiday season for their hat and mitten drive. At all Wings home games in November, there will be a box to donate new hats and mittens for elementary school children in the Aberdeen area. For all the latest Wings information, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and now Instagram, or visit AberdeenWings.com. That will pretty much wrap up this week's Wings Weekly.